before I start talking about the deck profile, I want to be completely transparent. I am only at A ranking. A1 technically. So close to S. I did a lot of climbing yesterday to try and catch up to the rest of the meta. Playing the budget decks really slowed down my climb. Not because like I was losing more than I was winning. I was constantly having to edit the decks and like write notes off to the side. So until a new pack comes out with new cards in it, I can just focus on the more competitive climbing aspect of the game. The deck that I'm having the most amount of fun with and the most consistent win rate right now is my Kagodo deck it is based around Blazing Flare Dragon. I call him Cho. If you get that reference, we are best friends. What I mean by it is based on Blazing Flare compared to like Blockade is because one, I only have one Blockade and two, Blazing Flare has this really cool superior ride engine using Blazing Core as a grade two. His ability is that if you have Iron Tail Dragon and Gatling Claw Dragon, you can put them all into the soul and then Superior Ride Joe. The advantage of this is that Core can ramp us a turn ahead of our opponent. It also guarantees us that we will get at least one retire with Blazing Flare. And since we have four of him, we have multiple chances in the game to use him. This is a going first deck. What that means is going first gives us the most advantage with this deck. It means we go grade one, they go grade one, we go grade two, superior ride to grade three while they are still on grade one. It gives us the most amount of advantage compared to going second where they go one, we go one, they go two, we go two, we then go to three. So when we get to three, they are already at two. So it still gives us an edge, but our opponent is much closer to us making it not feel as strong. The advantage of going to grade three a turn earlier is that for one, you get an additional drive check and two, any grade threes in our hand, we can now play a turn earlier to be a little more aggressive while they are, especially if they're on grade one where they can't intercept, we can rush them. The biggest downside of playing this deck is that we have to run Gatling Claw. Gatling Claw is a 4k forerunner with the ability to counter blast one, put him into the soul and then retire a grade zero on our opponent's board. To have him go off, we have to do the whole going first strategy still. Like if we are missing one of our pieces before our second turn, he kind of becomes a dead card, especially if we're not going first. Because the idea is that if our opponent goes first, they go to grade one, we go to grade one, we hit them. They then do something on their second turn to get rid of their starter, either reshuffling into the deck or retiring it. And then our Gatling Claw kind of is sitting out for the rest of the game, just becoming a 4k booster, which isn't a horrible thing. It's not the end of the world because we have a lot of 13k attackers, but it does definitely feel behind, especially because we have access to Conroe with Kagrado, which can give you, you know, a free perfect guard. Before I start going into like lines of play, let me tell you more about the deck. So let me talk a little bit more about Joe. Besides having the superior ride, he has the ability of whenever an opponent's rear guard is retired, that he gets plus 3k. And you can also soul blast four and retire an opponent's rear guard. Any rear guard, it can be any grade. The great thing about Joe here is that he can be on vanguard or on rear guard. So if the superior ride does not work, he can definitely be laid on a rear guard. And hopefully with other cards that we were playing on the deck, we will have enough soul at one point to get off his retiring effect. So we're obviously playing the four PGs. I'm playing two Kimnara. Kimnara synergizes with Joe because for one, the retiring gives Joe the plus 3k and Kimnara also goes to the soul. So if our superior ride didn't go off, we now have another unit to go into the soul to be able to get us to that free retire essentially. I'm playing three Joka. Joka is very essential for the deck because she becomes a 10k booster, allowing us to guarantee a second hit on a Vanguard each turn, which is great because this deck has so much control over retiring or getting past grade 2s in some capacity. So Joka being able to guarantee us more attacks in a turn is very essential in this deck because we aren't playing any crits. And then we are kind of forced to run the four Iron Tail Dragons. He isn't horrible, 
there are a lot of games where I've had to, you, you, you know, use two to three counter blasts to get him up to nine to 10 K just to hit magic numbers or just to take out a rear guard. And that's all stuff that bar cannot do. So in the grade two slot, we have the berserk dragon, obviously. We have a lot of free range with our counter blast use in this deck. Him being able to retire gets us our Joe to a higher 13k power. And there are lots of turns where I don't even use his counter blast. I just use him as an attacker and blocker. Blazing Core is kind of forced to be played in this deck because of the superior ride. It does kind of stink that we have to play four of him to give us a better chance of the superior ride. Because that means if we don't hit it or if we just draw into him later on in the game, he's just a 9k vanilla. Nahalem is here just to be the 10k intercept. He's also here to take out any 10k unit in the front row in case he is not able to hit the vanguard at this point in the game. I'm playing two flame edge dragons to give us more soul charge to get to a free blazing flare retire. I'm only playing two because I'm essentially gambling on the idea that I will be getting the superior right off every game. He is here just as backup to that. Because if I didn't believe that the superior ride wasn't going to go off, I would play more of him and then no blazing core just to go down a different route. But that's a whole other deck, which I will hopefully eventually be talking about. Besides Joe, I'm also playing three Dragonic Overlord. I would play four if I had one, but I'm just sticking with the three that I have right now. You want to run into him every game. There are lots of games where I will ride him over Joe just to have the 11k butt. To make our opponent have a harder time hitting us. Like I said earlier, I only have the one blockade. I wish I had two or three just to have a better chance of getting to him because he is our like finisher. We'll ride him on the last turn to guarantee us a multi-attack finish in case our opponent has multiple perfect guards in their hand. I have the one Goku. I think he's cool to splash into decks in case you need more retiring on the board. He does synergize with Joe if Joe's on the rear guard. Because every time you hit a drive check, you will pop a unit in the back row. The only reason I don't like Joka is because he is luck based. You can't plan around him. You have to hope you hit a trigger. So if you've already run through a lot of them, he's essentially a dead card. Dude, I I only originally had one Arc Dragon in here. But I messed up and accidentally crafted him. I A second one. I don't really know what I was doing I was just kind of like I thought I was hitting back but I accidentally hit craft and I don't know I don't I don't feel like I wasted it because he does get better once the end comes out I think so I'm happy having a second of him but dude I I messed up there um and since I don't have four copies of him I just have graphite dragon just filling in that slot because I feel like the 13k attacker is very essential in this deck to guarantee us a second hit every turn. So lines of play I've already talked about. We like to go first to give us that advantage of getting Joe out a turn earlier than our opponent, essentially getting us two turns ahead of them. There have been plenty of games where I go first, I move Gatling Claw to the back, my opponent goes, and if they kind of know what this deck does, what they'll do is they just won't attack. Let's say I'm playing a mirror match against another Kagurodo player, and they are playing Conro. They put Conro to the back. They know that I'm going to snipe with my Gatling Claw, so they just won't attack me. I then have a choice on my second turn. I can either now rush him, or I cannot. There have been many games where I've just looked at my hand, only having one grade 2 in it, will ride it, and just won't attack, forcing them to then go to their second turn, riding grade 2. And then they have the same decision. Do I go into attack? The idea is if that Conroe is very important to them. If they are not attacking, that tells me that they do not have any perfect guards in their hand and they need that Conroe to go get them one. If you do get the superior right off, you should try to get Joe to Soul Blast as soon as possible. You don't have to do it the turn of, but the idea is that you want to be able to ride a different Vanguard over him because all of his abilities are on rear guard, and since we play four of him in the deck, we will eventually get another card out of him. So getting the retire off as soon as possible, if you don't have another Joe in your hand, so then you can ride over him and take advantage of that free retire, and then be able to follow up the next turn, either a rush with blockade, a defensive play with Dragonic Overlord, or a control play with Goku. Putting the meta in mind, 
when going up against a Kagurodo mirror, we want to rush them as soon as possible because a lot of decks are not playing the superior ride. So the superior ride gives us the advantage, like I said earlier, being able to get to our grade three turn earlier, which means being able to use cards like Dual Axe Dragon to be able to hit for big numbers. So we want to rush them as soon as possible, especially if you can do it turn one or two. So then when we do get the superior ride off, we've already gotten us such a gap in damage that even if they can, you know, use a Dragonic Overlord play or a Berserk play with their counter blast that we've given them, the gap that we've given us and the control that this deck has with all the draw power can allow us to run away with the game. Playing against Novas is kind of fun. We always will have targets to retire. After a turn of retiring their units, they do have units like Transriser to allow them to recall units and bounce back. But that does guarantee us more units to retire, which means that units like Joe and Joka will both be able to get their power bonus every turn. Units you'll want to be paying attention for to retire are units such as Death Army Guy, and then any other back row unit that can enable multi-attacking, such as uh, like Cray Soldier. Going up against OTT, they're okay playing the Grindier match, but since we have nine draws in the deck, it allows us to have the stamina to keep up with them throughout this kind of grindier, slower game. Units to want to retire with this deck, you'll want to get rid of units in the back row that are making their COs and their Toms be able to hit for these magic numbers. Going up against Royals, it's kind of the same thing with Novas. You'll always have a unit to go after. They can bounce back very easily. Like you'll retire three units and then next turn they have their board full again without having to really use any of their resources in hand. With that in mind, sometimes retiring isn't worth it because the resources that you're going to spend is going to cost more than the resources they're going to have to spend to bounce back. So maybe put waiting until a turn where you think you're going to be able to do a lot of damage is when you're going to want to strike. My final thoughts for the deck is I think this is the most fun way to play Kagero in the like competitive scene. This deck is like really high rolly way more high really than other Kagero builds because Kagero is a very consistent deck this one is as well but since we play you know nine cards that are only here to get us to a superior ride it means that if the superior ride doesn't go off they're essentially dead cards the advantage of being a more high really deck compared to the other Kagero decks is that our games are a lot faster instead of being 10 minutes they're seven minutes and that extra amount of time can be used in the next game and the next game. So it allows us to climb faster. I was able to get from B3 to A1 just kind of casually playing throughout the day yesterday. I know there's more stronger builds that you can play with Kagero. I just have a lot of love for Joe. And I think that believing in the superior ride usually does pay off for me so if you want to give this deck a try i'll leave the deck code as a pinned comment down below i would definitely give it a shot this deck has a lot of flexibility in which of the grade threes you want to play so if you are missing maybe a couple dragonic overlords as you can see from my build the only one i have a playset of is joe and joe isn't doesn't even need the playset because of the superior ride it's